The topic of this video is calculating the isoelectric points of amino acids and, uh, and a more large perspective. This tool can be used to calculate the isoelectric points of peptides and polypeptides. All right, so now that we've discussed some of the driving chemical principles and some of the reasons we care about isoelectric points, um, let's work our way through a slightly more complicated um, example of how to calculate isoelectric point. So up here, we're going to use aspartic acid as an, our, our example. So aspartic acid has our quaternary amine, just like our previous example of glycine, our carboxylic acid, again, just like glycine, but the R group on aspartic acid is a carboxylic acid with this additional <clears throat> um, hydrogen here that can be donated to solution. So we're going to go through this the same way we went through glycine. <clears throat> so the pKa of our carboxylic acid over here on aspartic acid is 2.09. So if we titrate aspartic acid, we observe this form of titration curve um, and a flattening right here at 2.09. The pKa of the R group carboxylic acid is over here at 3.86. So this is where our next flattening of the titration curve occurs. And then the last pKa or the last flattening of our titration curve occurs at a pH of 9.82. So that's the pKa of our quaternary mean over here. Okay, so we're going to go back through our titration curve, much like we did for glycine, except we're going to make an extra pit stop at a pH of 3 this time. So when choosing your pHs, you really just want to pick um, a pH in between the pKa's of all your functional groups, as well as the outside. So here, 1 is outside all the pKa's <coughs> of the functional groups in aspartic acid. So at a pH of 1, we know that we are to the left of the pKa of our carboxylic acid. We're to the left of the pKa of the carboxylic acid on our R group. And we're very, very far to the left of the pKa of our quaternary amine. So this means each of our functional groups, or each of our weak acids, will be protonated. Right? So we have a neutral carboxylic acid here, a neutral carboxylic acid here, and a positively charged quaternary amine here. So if we go to our table, we performed our analysis. We know that at a pH of 1, aspartic acid carries a net positive 1 charge. Okay, so now let's look at a pH of 3. <clears throat> so at a pH of 3, now we are to the right of the pKa of this carboxylic acid. However, we are still to the left of our R group carboxylic acid, and we are still very far to the left of our quaternary amine. So at a pH of 3, this carboxylic acid will have donated its hydrogen to the surrounding solution. This carboxylic acid, however, again, remember his pKa is 3.86, so we're still to the left of it. We're right here. So he's going to remain protonated. And again, we are very, very far to the left of our quaternary amine up here. <clears throat> so now we have a functional group with one uh, negative one formal charge, a zero formal charge, and a positive one formal charge. So if we go to over to our table, negative one for our carboxylic acid, zero for our R group carboxylic acid, and positive one for our quaternary amine. So the net charge on aspartic acid at a pH of three is zero. Now let's move to a pH of six. So we are right here on the titration curve. <clears throat> now, we are still far to the right of our carboxylic acid. We are now newly to the right of our R group carboxylic acid, and we are still to the left of our quaternary amine. So, our molecule looks like this now. So, aspartic acid, this guy is still deprotonated, this guy is newly deprotonated, and this guy is still protonated. <clears throat> so, we have negative 1, negative 1, positive 1. So the total net charge on aspartic acid at a pH of 6 is negative 1. Um, so technically we could solve our problem here now that we have a range to look at around our net charge of 0. 
But for completionary sake, let's check out what happens when we look at aspartic acid's structure at a pH of 11. <clears throat> so at a pH of 11, now we are over here on the titration curve. We are far to the right of both our amine and both carboxylic acids. So our, all of our acidic protons are going to donate to the solution around them. So carboxylic acid here is negative, carboxylic acid here is negative, and now our amine has a net charge of zero because he's donated his, um, the available hydrogen. So in our table, we have negative one, negative one, zero for negative two. Okay, <clears throat> so now that we've run through the, our complete titration curve, we are going to evaluate where our true isoelectric point is. Right, so remember to pick the pKa's above and below wherever your pH of zero is, so in this case, we have the pKa of our R group carboxylic acid, which is 3.86, and the pKa of our carboxylic acid group over here, which is 2.09. So we simply put those together, take the average, and the calculated isoelectric point of aspartic acid is 2.98. And that's how you do it. So again, we know by working through the structure of our amino acid, going pH by pH, we know that somewhere between a pH of 2.09, which corresponds to the pKa of our carboxylic acid, and between a pH of 3.86, which corresponds to the pKa of our R group carboxylic acid, <clears throat> that aspartic acid has a net zero charge. And we discover that by taking the average of those two values.